He loves it, and believe me, I'm no good at singing either. The Bible says make a joyful noise. I yeah. sing in private. Mm. Do you sing in private? Sure I do. That's good. That's yeah. good. It's important. It is important. Tell and me. I think the worse we sound down here, the better we're going to yeah. sound when we're up there. <laughs> yeah, it does say the first will be last, and the last will be first. So. And it's, it's 9 like, o'clock. Yeah, so we're live? <laughs> we're live. Are we live? I think so. Huh? I think we're live. Are we live, Lisa? Yes. We, we are, are live. live, so welcome, welcome. <laughs> welcome this morning, folks. Um, I'm a little tongue-tied for some reason all of a sudden, but uh, welcome to the Sabbath School. Uh, we have, uh, we're on our third week of a brand new lesson, uh, The Great Controversy, and this week's lesson is The Light Shines in the Darkness. Now, Oh, no, I said the wrong one. <laughs> oh, no, I did. what a brat. Now, Dave and Ruth, they always do a wonderful job on the lesson, and and all of our teachers really, really study and, and do a, a tremendous amount of, well, let me just show, show your, your little workbook here. I mean, they, they actually go through a lot of trouble to make these lessons, um, you know, uh, enjoyable and, and informative for you guys, the listeners. And, and uh, we don't always get through it. But because of us. Because of us, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we'll we're, get you through it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, they should get, like, a prize if they actually get through it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Give them, like a, like, like, a treat or something. Uh, <laughs> Can you put it on the comments? Did we got anybody jumping in and saying hello this morning? But, uh, no, anyways, my name is Kerry, and, and we have Dave, and we have Ruth, and Ricky, of course. And if you guys are unaware, uh, the weeks, or if you're if you're joining us um, this morning, this lesson, all of our lessons are a week ahead as we film them live. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so people will have them all week to, to watch us. And we already have <coughs> Jeff joining us. Sabbath blessings, happy Sabbath, Jeff. And uh, Aaron, Big Sky Argonauts, is joining us. Hey, Aaron. Us. <laughs> hey, happy Jeff. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. And Watchman is with us as well. Hey, so, Watchman. Hello, Watchman. <laughs> so happy Sabbath. Quite the crowd. Quite the crowd already, so let's get started. All right. Before we uh, start the lesson, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for bringing us together to study your word. We thank you for that word. And we ask now that as we open it, that you will impart upon us the things that you think we need to know. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, the title of this lesson is, uh, as Carrie said, Light Shines in Darkness. Uh, I don't know if any of you, at least locals, have been to the um, Montana, the caverns down by Three Lewis Forks, and Lewis caverns. and Clark Caverns. Mm -hmm. We went a couple years ago. That is an amazing place. There's some interesting uh, formations. But the most interesting, I thought, was when they turned the lights out. <laughs> And you cannot see your hand in front of your face. It is that dark. Mm. And I'm real happy when they turn the lights back on because I'd never get out of there otherwise. Well, weren't there a couple of stories, too, of people actually got locked in there or they broke in there and they couldn't find their way out? Oh, and they were, yeah. yeah, kind of messed them all up. So light is a very important thing. Our memory text this morning, John 12:35. And all of my textual references come from the New King James Version. Then Jesus said unto them, A little while longer, the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. And he who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. And that is so apropos for those caverns down there, because you could walk in that darkness and you haven't a clue where you are. And you'd be falling a long, long ways down. Yeah, yeah. So, so what do you think he meant when he said, walk while you have the light? Why you can see. Why you can see well, better. Well, obviously he spoke of himself while he was on earth. Okay. Yeah, he said a little while longer the light is with you. That's right. Well, he knew he wasn't going to be there for very much longer. Ah. Jesus is the light. Okay, okay. That's the key. Is the world darkness then? Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. We had, I mean, all you have to do is flip in the news and you know how dark this world is yeah and the news is contributing to the darkness oh boy yeah, aren't yeah. they though yeah the, the, the big propaganda machine yeah yeah you can't believe anybody you you hear no one no 
No. No. So don't. Not even Fox? Nope. Not even, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I'm a lot sorry. of times they're speaking in ignorance, but you still can't believe. Yeah. yeah. Even the people who sort of know what they're talking e- even about. Even the sincere no. people that are, that yeah. are, that are, you know, that aren't influenced by money or, or, or some kind of a, you know, agenda. Right. It's usually, whatever they say, if you go think what the opposite would be. <laughs> <laughs> Very That's often the real news. that is the case, yes. <laughs> yes. Well, it's, since we don't have the light, quote unquote, with us, where do we get light now? From his word. From his word. Amen. We are to study the scriptures because in them we think we have eternal life. And, and these are they that speak of me. They testify yeah. about okay. Jesus. Okay. So we need to pray for the Holy Spirit's guidance when we read the Bible. And we need to read it diligently. So, so we need to read it to comes. actually know Jesus then. So that's sure. how we get to know Jesus mm-hmm. is yes. by reading and his it word. will it will lead you into conversation with him. Yeah. How do we do that? Through prayer. Through prayer. And also, I know when I came to God and I, I read and I read like the Psalms, he talked to me through his word. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was... To me, it almost seemed like magic. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? It was, it was cool. Yeah, uh, and to that point, we uh, we watch Hope Channel on Sabbath afternoons and evenings, and my favorite is Sean Boonster. I really like the guy. I like I like his cadence. I like the way he presents. Ruth gave me a book that he wrote, and I read that book, and I could see him. I could hear his voice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As I was reading, because he writes just like he talks. Uh-huh. And that's what, that's what we find in the scriptures. We can meet Jesus in those scriptures. Interesting. Yeah, and I'll bet you, um, I mean, I had a thought. I don't, know how to, I don't know how to express it just yet because it just popped in my head. But like, like it, once we get to heaven, if we didn't know what Jesus, because we don't know what Jesus looks like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, he could approach us and start speaking to us. And we would probably recognize him through the word, uh-huh, uh-huh. you know, out, outside of who he looks or who he is, you know, like if he's unassuming, if he doesn't have kingly. Of course, we're going to see him coming in the clouds, so we're obviously going to know yeah. who he is. But, yeah. but he really wants us to know who he is through his character, right. not necessarily by what he looks like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My, yeah. My, 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 what, sheep hear my voice? Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. Yes. Just want to say hi to watch, uh, Watchdog Kennels real quick. Uh, yeah. See, we got a, a, a new person uh, jumping in on the. All right. Yeah. Well, in the in the notes uh, under that text, in the Bible's last book, Revelation, the devil is pictured as a dragon and a serpent. Why is that? Why why in the world would he be pictured like a a dragon and a serpent? Well, a serpent we know because he he took the form of a serpent. In Eden uh-huh. to deceive Eve, okay. Then a dragon, because he was a dragon in heaven. Now check this out. If you look at the now, I know he's identified as a cherubim, but if you look at the seraphim, the word seraph, um, the root word is serpent, or or could be translated dragon as well. Uh-huh. Now that's interesting because they have six wings, right? The seraphs have six wings, and. So he was called that great red dragon, and hmm. it said, all the precious stones were thy covering. Hmm. So picture a, a dragon with stones. I, I have an active imagination, so I'm thinking like <laughs> his scales yes, are do. actually stones. Like, and oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. And like when he, when he moves around, you could hear the stones kind of, you oh. know, rubbing and making noises and stuff. And, oh. But this was a beautiful creature. This wasn't something. Yeah, it was scary. So yeah, I, I think that's he, that's the serpent part of it. Yeah, but but the note here says that he is a dragon because he desires to destroy God's people. That sounds. That's good what to he's me. turned into. That's what he's turned into. The <clears throat> because dragon. he spews yeah. water out of his mouth uh-huh, to kill the man uh-huh. child to kill the church. Okay. And, yeah. And like then that. he's a serpent. Because he uses all his cunning Subtleties, and yes. his lies to deceive them. Yep. So the serpent is the cunning, comely, nice-looking part of it. Well, I mean, he took the form of a serpent, and, yeah. and now the serpent has been looked at like 
that symbol of evil, mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. all serpents, you know. Yeah. And I don't think God originally created the serpent to be like that. And I don't think yeah. he originally created Satan to be like that. Right. And right. so this image of the dragon now has become the symbol of evil as well. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the serpent actually had wings. Yeah. And was yeah. very, very delightful to look right, at. Right, right. Otherwise, she wouldn't have uh, yeah. been deceived. Yep. Yeah, if he'd shown up in his red suit and pitchfork. Right, right. It's pretty easy to, to spot him. Yeah. Does he show up that way to us? Uh, uh, it, to, to make us think that he's like that, just for a deception. Ah, ah. So he can appear in other ways. He, and in many he's different not that. forms, okay. yes. Okay. And he uses them all, I believe. In the years after Christ's death, thousands were tortured, thrown to lions, burned at the stake by imperial Rome for refusing to <clears throat> worship its deities. Yet in the face of this cruel punishment, many stayed faithful. The gospel continues to spread, and the church grew. What do you think about the tendency of the, the growth or the spreading of the gospel being greater during times of persecution? What do I think of it being greater? Do you think it is? Yes. Well, ah. it's more pure. <laughs> it's more pure. It's more, it's more sincere. <clears throat> and it carries a lot more power with it. Okay. Because when persecution arises, then that's when God's people really begin to shine. So we need some persecution. Yeah. It sounds like we, we do. We do. We yes. totally do. What's the remedy for the last day church of Laodicea? is to purchase the gold tried in the fires. Ah. If you look up the word gold, it's always synonymous with, with, uh, with trials. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, because the gold the is refining the, process. The refining, refining process. process. There yes. it is. There it and is. And it has to go through the fires to, to pull out the dross. And, and I think Ben made the analogy a few Sabbaths ago that you know it's pure when you can see yeah. your reflection. Your reflection. Yes. But it's not yes. your reflection you're looking it's for. Christ. It's Christ. It's <laughs> Christ. Yes. Okay. And so if hard times come... Let's not be surprised or, or astonished because mm -hmm. this is exactly what we're kind of asking for when we join the Christian church. Mm -hmm. we're, mm -hmm. we're literally asking yeah. for our sins to be purged, which is actively a work that takes place in us that gets rid of the nastiness. Mm -hmm. And how do we know what's nasty unless we're put through a trial and the test? Because mm -hmm. I didn't know I had a problem with anger until somebody honked their horn at me. Yeah. And they're all of a sudden... <laughs> I got a problem with anger, apparently, oh, <laughs> you know, yeah. so that needs to be dealt with, yeah. right? Okay. Exactly. Okay. And, and, and also, it, it might be through the true persecution that the shaking happens as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely, because the rats <laughs> always jump from a sinking ship. Yeah. Wow. But this ship will just appear to be sinking. It's not going to be sunk all the That's way. That's right. That's right. It's just the appearance of it. Yeah. Well, when Satan discovered the fact that uh, under persecution, the gospel spread even greater, he changed his tactics. As a result, scores of pagans were baptized, but without thorough instruction in Bible truth. Do we see that happening today? The revivals, and it's all <clears throat> how we were talking, and <laughs> it's about all about feelings or oh. whatever. It feels good, oh. you know. Uh, yeah. What did Morris Vanden say? That, uh, uh, I was listening to his, uh, one of his sermons one time, and, and he said— That was for you, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> no. He said, I don't have any problem. He says, Satan doesn't have any problem with, with somebody becoming a Christian. In fact, uh -huh. he has no problem showing you how to become one either. Oh, no. yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and unfortunately, we have, and there's been a lot of talk recently with the church and the problems and how the church can actually indoctrinate, you know, pure-minded people and they're in a pure faith into something that they're not, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, and so a discussion for another time. Well, the right. Bible says that when we accept Christ, <clears throat> we become a new creature the the old changes mm -hmm. and that's the the real test of whether we've accepted Jesus if our if we make a profession of being a christian and nothing changes in our life something's wrong By the holy spirit's not working in us and yeah. we need we need to surrender our lives to christ so completely that the holy spirit can make changes in us and sometimes those changes yeah. are not comfortable by but their it has to fruits, happen. you shall know them. Well, mm -hmm. I think we fight against the Holy Spirit, quite we frankly. We do. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and I think when we invite God into our lives, the Holy Spirit immediately is, is he's faithful. He's, you know, he's faithful and just. And, and he answers our, 
our, our, the prayer of an honest, you know, petition mm -hmm. and he'll come into our lives and then we're, and then we're fighting him back. All yeah. of a sudden mm -hmm. we think this is strange and, and, and it's uncomfortable and doesn't feel good. And, and we want, we want, we want the pain to go away. We want the pain to go away. We want comfort. We want mm -hmm. all of these good things. And God's like. I know. Just like when you guys were talking, that is the way it is. And look at Jesus. After he was <clears throat> baptized, what happened? He was led by the Spirit into the <laughs> into wilderness. Temptation. Into temptation. Well, by the fourth and the fifth centuries, we started seeing church prelates blending pagan practices with Christian teachings. That is a problem. When we start compromising our belief system in order to attract new converts, where is that going to lead? It's going to lead to deceiving the whole world to where mm. we're where we are right now at mm -hmm. the end of the world, mm -hmm. all of these have been brought into the church where people don't see them as a compromise yeah. because they grew up with it. Yes. They yes. see it as actual Christianity. Yeah. You point out certain things to your Christian friends and they look at you in awe. I've never heard of that. No. Why? Because you're believing what the church is telling you to believe instead of believing what you're reading in the Word. You know, and that makes me also think a lot of people, like with uh, the, the series <coughs> Left Behind, they, <clears throat> they take what the Scripture, one was taken, one was left behind, mm -hmm. and they make the whole series out, one verse. out of one verse. Yeah. And people take it as biblical truth. Yes, because it came from the Bible. Yeah. It, just that yeah. little bit, but then there's books and series. It's out of context. It's, like, it's out of context. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It, I, I've heard a, a, a preacher say that you can prove anything you want to prove from Scripture if you lift it out of context. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, a good example is Peter went, or, or Judas went out and hung himself. And then you go to another yes. verse, go ye and do likewise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see, I mean, you could make anything. You can take any book and pull text out of it, and then assemble them in a certain series mm -hmm. of words mm -hmm. and make anything you want out of any book. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to just be the Bible, but they've, you know, Satan has skillfully done this with the Word of God. He's done that with Jesus when he brought him up on the mount, when he showed him all the treasures of the earth, yeah. when you know, when he tried to give him bread, and you know. Well, moving right along, so we can get through this. <laughs> We go to the next part of the lesson, compromise Satan's How subtle it's be done, strategy. Huh? John 14, 6 <clears throat> says this, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. Okay. And then John 8. Well, 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 okay, oh. I, I do have one question. Okay. What about the Jewish nation? What about the Jewish nation? Ain't they supposed to be the chosen ones? The Jewish nation was the chosen group to what? To spread the gospel. Yeah. Did they fulfill that? Well, they kept it to themselves. Not only did they not fulfill it, they rejected the Messiah and they had him crucified. Then after three and a half years after that, when Stephen was stoned, that commission was taken from them. And now the word was to go to the Gentiles. That's why Jesus said, your house is left to desolate. you desolate. Yes. And it, because yes. they refused to accept him. They refused, and so many people do not get that. They're mm -hmm. like, well, Israel's going to return as a nation, and, right. and, right. they're, and hey, they're going to be— but, but technically it is. It is, yes. Technically it is, because the word Israel is literally translated as the father of a great nation, is it not? And we are told that— if you believe, you, you are, are Abraham's, Abraham's seed, seed yep. and heirs, and according, heirs to the according to the promise. You are Israel if you are a believer in Christ. Amen. And Abraham but you was have promised that the whole world will be blessed through his line. Yes. Through his line, which is the line of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes. Literally. Not yes. the line of, of, of Jacob. Not the line of, of um, Isaac or, or yeah. Moses Isaac or, or anybody or, else. Yeah. It's Any, through Jesus. It's through literally Jesus. So no one is saved without Christ. Amen. They have to Old have Old Testament, Christ. New Testament, right. it was all the same. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, John eight forty four. 
It says, you are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resource, for he is a liar and the father of it. Who are we talking about? Satan. Back to Satan, yes. The father of lies. Right. What Jesus says is true because he is the author of truth. And in contrast, Satan is a liar and the author of lies. And not un- only that, but a murderer. Yes. <laughs> he undermines confidence in his word, <clears throat> contradicts God's re- revealed will, distorts scripture— we talked about that, mm-hmm. and at times misquotes the Bible to his advantage. One of the prime things there, misquoting, is the same as taking out of context. And I think of of um, the the clean and unclean foods that we are to eat and not to eat, and even Christians who semi believe that say, well, you can eat anything you want because of Acts chapter 10. The, the problem with Acts chapter 10 is they stop reading in the middle of the object lesson. Yeah, I know. Where it says, don't call anything and common unclean or unclean. Or unclean. That I've called clean. Common unclean yeah. <clears throat> but the object lesson continues. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, so Peter really didn't understand it at first anyway. He never did eat of the unclean things. Never did. If you take things out of contest, you can prove anything but, but, you but, want. And what's sad is <clears throat> some of the Bible study Bibles will actually say in their little footnote, therefore, all food is clean. Yeah, yeah. And people take it as, okay, that's truth. You have to read it for yourself. Well, in the other context of the, 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 the sister story to that would be what people often refer to with the washing of the hands at the mm-hmm. table, mm-hmm. where the Pharisees criticized Jesus and his yep. disciples for not washing their hands. Yep. Jesus made that statement. It doesn't matter what goes into your mouth, but what comes out of your mouth. Mm-hmm. It comes from your heart what because, comes out. Yeah. Because that's what defiles <laughs> a man. Yeah. And, and so, again, contextual. Yeah. Yes. Contextual. Yes. Everything is contextual in the Bible. Yeah. It has to be read under the context of how it was meant. One of the things that I, I – the notes that I put in my email uh, this last week was don't just read the, the the quote of scripture that I give you. Go back to the Bible and read the entire chapter. Yeah. Read the whole context Amen. to get the picture. See, that's almost what I don't like about sermons. Is mm-hmm. they'll take then they'll make a whole sermon over just you know a, a verse you know from yeah. a chapter, yeah. and it's like and you can twist it to any way you really want to, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and it could sound good. That's why we should, yeah, definitely yeah. go back through the Bible. Well, Proverbs twenty three twenty three says, Buy the truth and do not sell it. Also, wisdom and instruction and understanding. John seventeen seventeen, Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. So how do you know the word? You have to read it. You have to immerse yourself into it. Immerse yourself. And you that's have to be changed term. by it. Now, yes. You would think. And that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. Yep. Is yeah. It, yeah. And, I mean, if you, read the, if you read the story of Huck Finn or Tom Sawyer, you could, you could get the gist of the whole story the first time through. Yeah. I can tell you that you can read the Bible a hundred times, and you're still going to get new stuff out yes. of it. Yes, yes. And you're still going to be learning. It's a very deep, deep subject. Yeah. You know, yeah. a lot of this... Um, you know, types and shadows is really what kind of blew my mind, uh-huh. you know, when it comes to the Bible. Uh-huh. And, and, you know, when Ivor Myers was teaching us about these things, that's what really opened my mind up to the Bible and how, you know, you look at the stories and how all these stories point forward to Jesus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And they say, you know, a lot of people will say, well, the Old Testament was a God of vengeance. The New Testament is a God of love. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the same God, actually. You know, yeah. especially in the types and shadows, you'll see it. And what comes first, though? God's mercy and his grace. Mm-hmm. Look how long we have had his mercy and grace. You can see his mercy and grace right in the, in the Garden of Eden. Yeah. 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 Y- you know. Yeah. The end result is rejection of that mercy and grace. Mm-hmm. So many times rejected, which would be the unpartable sin, wouldn't yeah. it? Rejected. Yeah. Then we see his wrath. Well, let's go to Acts chapter 20. 
and we're going to take a look at verses 27 to 32. The title of this section is Savage Wolves. Mm. For I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Therefore take heed to yourselves and to all the flock, among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from yourselves, men will rise up speaking perverse things. He is predicting here that all of this business that we talk about and know as Antichrist and uh, the man of sin and all of that stuff has its origin within the church. People don't understand that. They don't, they don't know that evil is coming out of the church. And so if they hear it in church, it can't be wrong. You know what's insanity to me? Is they keep on looking for an antichrist when the antichrist, there's been many antichrists, yes, yes. which there's been many popes. Yes. And his title is God on Earth. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, and it's like, why can't they connect the dots? Yeah. I mean, all, all the other Protestant forefathers, they knew it. Yeah. What happened yeah. within the last, what, 100 years? Yep. All of a sudden, they were, all the Christians have gotten They like, totally forgot about amnesia. it. Yeah. 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 yeah, they've completely forgot about what all of the... All of the Protestant fathers have taught. All yeah, they of believed them all. They knew who the years. Antichrist was. Yes, yes. It's so weird. You know, people have to understand that, the, that this is the great controversy. The great controversy really is fought inside the church. Mm-hmm. That's where it's being fought. And it's being fought abroad. I mean, it, in a larger scale, obviously, because if you look at the whole world, the whole world is falling apart. Mm-hmm. But literally, the, co- the great controversy is being fought inside the church. So when I read things about Israel, I subscribe. Try this. Just try this. <coughs> just, just for giggles. Subscribe everywhere it says Israel, superimposed church mm-hmm. in your mind. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, you're getting this whole different story about how God operates and what's happening. Because did the prophets come to condemn? I mean, you know, did they mainly come to condemn the Philistines or the Amalekites or all? Or did they come to, to reprove the, the wrong acts of Israel? They were warning Israel that yes. their their direction was going to bring disaster. Yeah. Yes, over and over again. The the yeah, occasionally they would condemn outside nations uh-huh. that were mm-hmm. attacking mm-hmm. Israel, but when the prophets came, that's why I always question these so called prophets that preach good and smooth things. Yeah, and predict uh-huh. good and smooth things. That's what did, the false prophets did. In exactly. The Bible. Did oh, Ellen White prophet. predict good and smooth things <laughs> in the church, or did she constantly reproof it? Yeah. And reprimand it yeah. yep. when she yep. came. Yep. And she even, she pronounced some judgments that, you know, the Review and Herald burnt down. She said, look, you guys are making, a you guys are committing sin. And God will visit you. And, and this place is going to catch on fire. And it's going to be a fire so hot that nobody can put it out. Yeah. And guess what? Exactly that happened. Yeah. You know, and so... Just like the prophets of old, she condemned the, the bad practices of the modern day mm-hmm. church. And Satan, well, the bottom line is Satan mixes just enough truth with evil that he can, he can sway you in one direction if you are willing to go there. Because it sounds good uh-huh. and it makes sense. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, it, like us going back to God, you know, a Christian nation, yeah. it makes sense. Getting our mor- morality back. Exactly. We yes. want it. Yes, and it's coming. And it's going to bite us in the butt. Yeah. Well, let's look at Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verses 7 through 12. Again, in the New King James. <clears throat> For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now rest- restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all powerful, all power, signs, and lying wonders, 
and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they will not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, and pay attention to this line, because I want to ask that question, <laughs> God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they may all be con condemned who did not believe the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. It says God will send them a strong delusion. But the key is in the very last sentence of that, of that, the very last couple words in that sentence, they, because they have pleasure in unrighteousness. Oh. They that, refuse to believe the truth. Yeah. They refuse to believe the truth. So they blinded themselves. Why? They blinded uh, themselves. They're, because they're defending a sin, that's why. Ah. And, and every single time that you see people rejecting the truth is because they're defending some pet sin that they're mm -hmm. harboring in their heart. Why do I know that? We're Maybe I've done that it. myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. It takes one to know one. And and I'm just happen to be human, a fallen human being. So mm -hmm. I'm a Look, sinner. If well, we're gonna I'm be honest, if we're gonna be honest, we gotta be honest about everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we gotta be honest about ourselves and how we think. Yeah. And mm -hmm. other people don't think that much different than we do. Well, the last part of this uh, section says even in Paul's day, there was a gradual <laughs> departure from the truth of God's word regarding obedience to God's law. And I find that amazing. I mean, we look at those people in that era as being very close to God, don't we? And I thought that's an amazing statement. This departure would flourish in the later centuries. Do we find that happening today? Is that departure from truth flourishing today? Oh, yeah. It's so gone that no one can tell the difference. Oh, yeah. There's so much confusion now. You know, the problem is, I mean, and, and you guys, listen, you have to read The Great Controversy. Let's, let's make an offer real quick on that. I don't have the book with me, but we will gladly send you guys a copy of The Great Controversy. Please send uh, us your address to prophecymontana at gmail.com. It's in the bio on the channel, mm. prophecymontana at gmail.com. Send us your request, your address. We don't even need your name. Just tell us you want a copy of The Great Controversy. We'll send it to you. Because that lays out the whole history of the Protestant Reformation from the time of the death of Christ all up until modern day time. And it really just clarifies so much it's about awesome. what's yeah. going on. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I read that book uh, probably two months ago, cover to cover, and it was mind-blowing. And I'll add, uh, if you guys are in the... United States. That's who we're offering this yeah. to. We'd like to offer it to the world, but we just can't afford the shipping. Mm -hmm. We're a small community, a small church. Um, maybe one day we'll have the means to, to mm -hmm. send them out a little bit further, but we just don't right now. So my, my deepest apologies to anybody out there that... Well, the last thing I, wanted, the I want to sh uh, share here is uh, this short paragraph. Contrary to the second commandment, idols were introduced into Christian worship. For millennia, idols were in the forefront of all pagan religions. To make Christianity more acceptable to heathens coming into the Christian church, pagan deities were renamed as so-called saints. Sunday, the day of worship for the, for the sun god, was gradually adopted as the day of Christian worship in honor of the resurrection. This false day, not sanctioned in Scripture, prevails even today. And you it were does? telling you were <laughs> you were telling me the other what yes last night that what uh, that that popular evangelist uh, that comes John, on Sundays, uh, Mag oh, Mag I can't even Montgomery think of, or I, I can't think yeah of his I forget. Name. <laughs> uh, but he was all saying uh, that. How all nine of the Ten Commandments are binding because they are um, moral, <laughs> but the Sabbath has nothing to do with it. And John McGuff, oh, why can't I think I know of his who name? You're talking about, but MacArthur or something. It's probably best when they don't say his name. Yeah, and uh, he says that just because the the Sabbath is in the New Testament. You see a repeat of all the other commandments, but you don't see a repeat of 
that in the New Testament. Not even in Hebrews 4, huh? Uh, yeah, uh, well. Or Revelation 14. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. On and on and on. Yes. I mean, yes. you, you really got to do some 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 ju- jumping through hoops to get to that but conclusion. The thing of it is, is this pastor knows better. Yeah. He, he knows better. He's deliberately deceiving the people. Yeah. Deliberately. Passing on the lie. Yeah. Because why? Because if he told the That's truth, he would lose his money. That's He'd right. lose the people. That's right. To support. Well, it's Ruth's turn now. Sorry, Dave, if we uh, <laughs> no. cut you short. Well, we've been uh, dwelling on how much Satan wants to deceive people. And he goes to great lengths to make us believe lies. And this section is talked, talking about how we can avoid being deceived. Let's look at John 17. Verses 15 to 17, it says, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. This is Jesus praying for people in our day. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. The way that God reaches people is through the word. Mm -hmm. And if we're not reading the word... What can he do? He's not going to come and pick us up by the scruff of the neck and shake us and say, you've got to do this differently. He, he works through his word. He lets us make choices. The, the problem is most people are too lazy to do this on their own. If they go to church one day a week and try to absorb what's being told to them, that's good enough. That's good enough to get me through. Well, I have news. It's not. No. It, it's not. You have to read the Bible like your life depends upon it. Because it because does. Because it literally does. Yes. We have, we have been sold a line of goods that only certain people can understand the Bible. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. the average person can't. And that's just not true. If you look at the ministry of Jesus, who is he ministering to? The average people. Mm-hmm. And they were the ones that he was teaching the scriptures to. Acts uh, 20.32 says, So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Once again, we're told it's the scriptures where we find the truth of God. It's where we find Jesus. It's where we find salvation is in God's word. Um, All scripture is inspired by God, not just some parts. All scripture. The Bible it it says. isn't. I always like this one. Well, m- men wrote the scripture, so it can't be trusted. They always <laughs> say that. Oh, it was written by men. Mm-hmm. It was as they were moved by the Holy Spirit Holy that men. they wrote. Yeah. Holy men. Of Holy men. Of Holy God. men of God. The yeah. whole Bible must be accepted as the word of God. Otherwise, the door is wide open for deception. So many of the churches nowadays are trying to harmonize evolution and the Bible. Mm-hmm. If you throw out creation, then you have to throw out Jesus because he preached that the Bible, that the world was created by God. Yeah, isn't that funny? And you can throw out the fourth commandment because the fourth commandment is supposed to be a commemoration of creation, creation not of the resurrection. And, and through the creation, where, what does the Sabbath do? It points to it God as the creator. God. Right. <laughs> and we do have a commemoration of the resurrection. Uh, yes. They call that Easter. They call it baptism. Oh, okay. I got I, you again on that you one. You did, didn't you? I, yeah. You did? Yeah, I'll, I'll learn one day. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, the world does. The, the yeah. Easter is that whole thing. That, the yeah, and, as and all polluted that. as yeah. it has become. Yeah. 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 Well, the Bible clearly reveals God's infinite love in the light of the great controversy. It exposes Satan's delusions and reveals the devil's deceptions. If we're not studying the Bible, we are going to be deceived Mm -hmm. because Satan is very subtle in his deceptions. He doesn't he doesn't come out, at least not at first, and tell us direct lies. He mixes the truth in enough that he kind of gets us hooked. And then he gradually mixes in more and more of his deceptions. That's right. And he's had a very, very long time of doing this. This is right. He knows our ancestry. He knows what we're uh, susceptible to. We must fight against any and all attempts to undermine the authority 
or inspiration of the Bible. Even from those who, while professing great love of the Bible, bring doubts about it even subtly. So just because a pastor or a Bible teacher or somebody like that says something, check it out for yourself in the scriptures. That's right. Because anybody can be deceived. And, and we're including us in this little conversation, That's right. aren't right. you? And all of us are learning That's right. day by day. And we're humans and we're faulty. That's right. We're we faulty are. and subject but, but, to... But his word isn't. <laughs> but the, the word of God is not. That's right. Um, the scripture works through our minds. God wants us to understand he doesn't want us to make a choice for him just blindly. That's a good point. Listen, we, I know we talked about this last Sabbath, about emotions and, 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 and decisions. Now, uh, now emotions, I think, do play a part in the Christian experience, you know, because uh, I've, I've had overwhelming emotional responses like, like gratefulness and joy and all these other things. The Bible says that he would give us joy, right? Great joy or peace that pass, passes all the understanding. Mm-hmm. But the actual decision part is an intellectual decision. It's an appeal to our to our mind, not our emotions. No, nope, no. Nope, and yeah. so, but the emotions follow, don't they? Yeah, of course, if you yes, it, it's like in a marriage. You, when you guys got together, mm-hmm. you know, Dave and Ruth, and when they married, like you know, I, well, how many hundreds of years ago was this? Fifty-six years. It was like I'm counting. You guys have been married for like forever <laughs> and ever. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> you guys still look like you're. In your twenties, but oh, yeah, mean, yeah, yes. yeah. But <laughs> after the hundreds of years, <laughs> <laughs> one day we will again. <laughs> but but you guys had an emotional response to an intellectual choice, uh-huh. isn't that correct? You yes. guys made intellectual choice to get married. I mean, that mm-hmm. was something you had to probably sit down and think about. Yes, you know, it wasn't something that you know. I mean, maybe a lot of people we were make making them, a commitment. Yeah, ah, that's the word. Yeah, yeah. So, and you don't make commitments lightly. At no. least you shouldn't. Yeah. You shouldn't promise to do something if you have no intentions of keeping your promise. Oh. As Christians, we do not check our brains at the door of the church. <laughs> Nevertheless, the brilliance of human reasoning alone is incapable of discovering the divine truths of Scripture. Truth is not a matter of human opinion. It is a matter of divine revelation. Mm-hmm. And the means by which we receive that revelation is through the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus said we need to ask for the Holy Spirit. Um, there's three texts here I'd like to have us read. Uh, Ricky, would you look up Proverbs 16.25 and Carrie Judges 21.25 and Dave Isaiah 53.6. And we want right. to learn from these texts what they reveal about Satan's strategy of deception. All right, I got Proverbs Six twenty sixteen uh, twenty five. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Ooh. Okay, Judges twenty one twenty five. I, I have to watch an ad before it'll load my Bible. Oh, no. <laughs> it's almost over. It's almost over. <laughs> See, this you don't have. <laughs> I, I, I know. I know. You want to go know. ahead and read Isaiah fifty three six? I'll, I'll read Isaiah fifty three six. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Okay. Okay, and that was Judges. Twenty-one twenty-five. Uh, do 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 do. Very last chapter. Very last verse. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, what are these? Uh, text revealing about Satan's strategy. What is it he's trying to get us to do? Our own way. <laughs> oh, that's right. Do without yeah. will is yeah. the whole sum of the law, isn't that? Alice and I Crowley's? did it my way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Or whatever. laughs> yeah, it's follow the heart. Yeah, because it seems right. Yeah, yeah. because it seems yeah. right. Yeah, well, do just you. like just do you. Just like this movement that is going to happen with the Christian coming back to God, it's going to feel right. It's going to seem right because. We want to get back to God. We want those. It's going to seem right. Well, and it's no one is exempt. That, that's the thing I got. We're, we're all in the same boat. We've all gone astray. Well, if you look back at the Garden of Eden, when Eve was confronted by the serpent, 
She knew what God had said about that tree. Mm -hmm. And she chose to believe the serpent. Mm -hmm. So she was using her own idea of how she how she should decide things. Mm -hmm. She was relying on her own self to make the decision, not relying on God, and that is a deadly thing to have happen. I, I wonder if uh, if if uh, and you shall be like God, knowing good and evil had anything to do with it. I'm mm. sure <laughs> it might have. Yes, one of the devil's most effective deceptions is to lead us to believe that human reasoning, unaided by the Holy Spirit and uninformed by the Word of God, is sufficient to understand God's will. We think so highly of ourselves <laughs> that we think we can comprehend God. Ricky and I are talking about this all the time, too. Mm -hmm. You know, who can comprehend God? We can't. There's who no way. God? Forever we're going to be studying and we'll still be in awe. Yeah, in yeah. awe. Yeah. yeah, I mean, because we're talking about the Trinity. I, I personally, I, I totally believe the Holy Spirit is a person. You yeah. know, I've, mm -hmm. I've had him in my life, you know, and guiding me and showing me. And not all believe that. Yeah. And, and it's, it's like, is that, do I understand it? No. And I might be for eternity, you know, trying to comprehend it. I don't know. There's... I love you, Jeff. There's there's a person out there who 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 don't believe that the Holy Spirit is a person, uh, you know, uh, of the Godhead. Mm -hmm. But I do, and I have plenty. I've seen in, through Scripture and the writings of Ellen White, but Scripture enough to you know, and a personal experience to know that the Holy Spirit has a personality. Well, what it did is. what did Jesus say as he was ascending? He will send the comforter. The comforter. Yes. That is the Holy Spirit. And he will show you all things. Well, and then when you're baptized, you're baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and, and the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. I mean, I, I know there's plenty of proof in the Bible for me. But, but the thing of it is, is even though we don't see eye to eye on something, we still are brothers, right? Yeah. And yeah. we still can. Because I'm not going to. I'm not going to know it all. There you know? isn't any one of us who is going to be saved who will get there by knowing it all. Yeah. Not going to happen. I mean, how can you fathom? Or, or like the seven spirits or, or the Holy Spirit or the Father. How yeah. can we fathom? We're evil. We're yeah. evil, finite minds. And how can we comprehend God? Trying to comprehend God? an <laughs> infinite God. Yeah. And, and to me, it, it almost falls under the, the subject of doubtful disputations because mm -hmm. God emphasized his character, not, you know, yes, there is instruction on he's three, he's one, he's seven, oh. he's all these different things. Do we, do we really know? No, can we no. comprehend? Will we ever comprehend? <laughs> Probably I not. Know. I, I think Christians put way too much emphasis on this stuff, it, and that's probably Jeff's going to disagree with me here, and that's fine. Uh, yeah. You know, I still love Jeff. Yeah, I love and, Jeff and, too. And Jeff Definitely still loves us. Yes. And so, but the thing of it is, is God emphasized His character, and His law is a transcript of that character. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to kind of take a few minutes and talk about this because, believe it or not, it pops up a lot in the comments. Mm -hmm. so. Well, yeah. um, we know that that um how can i put this god wants to reveal himself to us but because of the sin in our lives because we're sinful mortals we have this veil self-centeredness mm -hmm. it's very hard for us to comprehend anything superior to us because of our self-centeredness. <laughs> and so we try to form God into our mold, into something that we can understand, when that is impossible. Yeah. It's very difficult for us to admit that that's impossible. It, and I liked it with Job, because he was like, were you there when I <laughs> said the boundaries? <laughs> right. you know? right. And Job yeah. was perfect in all of his ways. Mm -hmm. And he's still saying, you know, you yeah. can't comprehend yeah. me. Right. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> much big. too big. I'm way big. <laughs> yes. and that's that's the that's the theme of what God is saying here. When yeah. we look at the heavens, when we look at the earth, when we look at even when we shrink things down to the smallest of the atoms, and now there's things that are even smaller <laughs> than atoms, and there's like little worlds inside of worlds inside of worlds inside of worlds. And, and it's God like, understands it all. It's <laughs> mind blowing. <laughs> yes. God has not left us alone on our journey from earth to heaven. The Holy Spirit points us to the sacred scriptures that lead us homeward. Truth and error, right and wrong, good and evil. These can be correctly understood only in the light of God's word. So when we get out on our own thinking, I've, I know this, I can do this, we're treading on very thin ice. It's important that we make God's word our final arbiter of truth and morality because there's nothing else in the world that's trustworthy. No. Nope. Let's go. We have about 10 minutes left. Let's see if we can get this last bit through here. I like this one. This Second awesome. Corinthians 4, verses 3 through 6. Second Corinthians 4, verses 3 through 6 says... But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this world has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Again, we're told that God wants us to understand it's our minds that he's after, and it's our minds that Satan's after. He wants us to misunderstand everything. Um, it's only God who can open our eyes. We're all living in darkness. We've been talking about that because this world is a dark place. And it's only God who can bring the light. And he does that through the scriptures. He wants us to understand. He doesn't want us to just accept something like my parents used to say, you do it because I said so. <laughs> well, God sometimes tells us that this is what's best for you. But it's, oh, it's as he wants us to get to know him so that he, we find him trustworthy. And then when he says something, we don't question it. That, and that is awesome because look at all the ways he led Israel. He led them to, it seemed like a hopeless situation, through, through a, a valley that was, you know, to, to uh, the Red Sea. With the Egyptians coming right on their behind, mm -hmm. it, it looked like, well, "What did you do? You 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 suckered us, God." You know what I mean? But it was for them to put their trust. It don't always look correct. That's right. It don't always look correct. Mm -hmm. Because couldn't he went through like uh, through the land of the Philistines? That he would have been have a direct. Picked them up by hand and set them in the mm -hmm. promised land, yeah. and they wouldn't have even had to walk. But that would not years. have <laughs> have taken Egypt out of the people, and that's what he was trying yeah. to do. There's so many instances where they they say, "Oh, if we'd only died in Egypt, we wouldn't have to do all this horrible stuff. We had plenty to eat there. Everything was hunky dory." They forgot about the fact that they were beaten, enslaved, and and all gripe, the bad gripe, things gripe, that gripe, happened. Gripe, gripe. Yes, <laughs> but see, we do the oh, same. Exact different. <laughs> we we are no same. different. Yeah, and he kept them warm at night. Yeah. He he kept them cool oh, at, during the day. Their he shoes them, didn't wear out. He kept them fed and watered, and I mean, <laughs> uh, what more did they want? They, they wanted, wanted onions. Flesh pots of Egypt. They wanted, they wanted onions, onions and garlic. And garlic. <laughs> <laughs> onions and yummy. And that's that's where the battle is. Satan does not want us to trust God. Yeah. He constantly bombards us with reasons to think that God is not trustworthy. And that he's all out he's to out to us. do is make yeah. your life difficult. Yeah. When it's actually Satan, who's the one who's making it? That's I mean, right. was it was it God who was actually uh, hitting Job with all that, or was it Satan? No, it was, it was Satan, Satan trying to get Job away from God. Yeah, right. and Job didn't understand that. He thought, you know, it was God, and he's like, <laughs> but but he wouldn't he wouldn't curse him to his face. He though he slay me, I will trust him. Yes, so Job said, and we all might have to go through the same Job experience. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So Satan wants to darken our minds to what God really wants for us, and he does this by keeping us from studying God's word. Mm -hmm. By deranging the powers of the mind through the excesses of body and soul. The things that we crave on this earth. Those are the things that Satan is using to separate us from God. And you can look around you at all kinds of things that people go to excess on. I remember, like it was yesterday, being addicted to cigarettes mm. and chewing tobacco and coffee and beer and all these things. And it was painful to bid farewell to all those things. Mm. But I knew that those same things were killing me. Mm -hmm. He does it on a physical level. He also does it on, by appealing to our pride and our self-confidence. We think that, oh, I'll do this and I'll be popular and I'll be... Well, look at all the people who, who crave that center of attention. <laughs> Self-idolatry is what it amounts to. And uh -huh. it's per, it pervades this earth. It's one of Satan's big temptations. Self, it's hard to... Mm. It's hard to yeah fight against self. Well, and, <laughs> and that's the, that's the true enemy, huh? The self. <laughs> self is the true enemy, and if we if we take what God is saying to us, you know, in His Word about how the the light casts out the darkness, you know, we're living in the world, therefore we can't see, right? We don't know where we're going. We don't know what we're doing, and even now we've had we've been churching it for how long, you know, collectively mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. maybe you know who knows. And we're still in darkness. I mean, we must really kind of look at this honestly, right? Mm -hmm. And we're still trying to seek the, the light. Well, we should be trying to seek the light, right? Uh -huh. I mean, if, if we really saw the condition that we're actually in, you know, it would be very humbling, I think, instead of walking around like we're little know-it-alls. We're what? Blind, miserable, naked, and yeah, we're not in a good yeah. situation. We're not. We're not in a good situation. And, and that, that humility then allows the light to shine. Mm. I, th I think that's that's the key right there, because when we get haughty, when we get like we we're all that or like you were saying, um, you know, lifted up or whatever. We have to be like proud. Jesus. Proud. Mm -hmm. We have to be like Jesus. And he poured out everything mm -hmm. to others. Well, it says at the end of time, the lack of knowledge on the part of the lost is not because they could not know. It's because they refuse to. We have the choice whether or not we're going to study the scriptures or come to God or in, invite him into our lives. There's a, just a few verses I'd like us to look at in the book of John, chapter 1. And they describe Jesus. And this is why he's so important to us. Amen. In verse 4, it says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Verse 5, And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. The only reason that people don't comprehend Jesus is because they refuse to. They don't want to be bothered. They see something that does not look that great. You know, when Jesus came to this earth, he did not Ooh. come with beauty. Mm. He came, uh, how does the Bible say it? Uh, he was very unassuming. He, he, he was did, very simple. He didn't have any outward beauty that humil anyone, any humil person should humble desire. Person. Should desire him. He was, he was very ordinary, very plain in his appearance. Mm -hmm. He wasn't like Absalom, who was beautiful from the head to the toe. He wasn't like Lucifer, who was, who was beautiful from head to toe. Mm -hmm. You know, he's very unassuming. And he's walking this earth, but his words mm -hmm. had this tremendous power. So he wasn't flamboyant or anything. So all of his followers that were following him, people probably wondered, why are you following this guy? He just kind of looks so mm -hmm. ordinary. There's nothing special about him. Well, yeah. verse 9 says that, he was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He is the source of light for this dark mm -hmm. world. And let's look at verse 14 then. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That's who Jesus is. He's the light of the world. Mm -hmm. He's the only source of light that we can be trusted in this dark world. And... We have the choice whether or not to accept that. It's up to us. Mm. There's one last um, quotation from the Great Controversy that I'd like to read. It says, The same spirit of hatred and opposition to the truth has inspired the enemies of God in every age. And the same vigilance and fidelity have been required in his servants. 
the words of Christ to the first disciples are applicable to his followers to the close of time. What I say unto you, I say unto all, watch, Mark 13, 37. We have to be connected to Jesus. We have to be in prayer and in the study of the word if we hope to get through. Every day. Amen. Every day. So how do we do as far as the lesson? We got through we it. We got through it. Praise the Lord. You powered your way through it. <laughs> well, they made a point. Did you see it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, hey. well, okay. Um, now. <laughs> the, the truth be known, both of us have been teachers, and that was always part of the curriculum. You had to get through it. If you, you don't get through it. Through it. Yeah. You're not going to get yeah. through it. Yeah. Well, when you're teaching teenagers, they like to delay things yeah. because they know they don't have to accomplish get you side quite as much. You know? <laughs> they can get you sidetracked and off the... <laughs> we're, we're teenagers in the brain, right. yeah. apparently, Ricky. <laughs> I don't think any of us ever totally gets over that. <laughs> so, hey, listen, guys, a ton of fantastic comments. I've been reading them as you guys have been scrolling or putting them down and stuff. And we're just so thankful for all of you guys that participated in the, in the live chat today. We didn't get a chance to read, you know, I don't think any comments this morning. And, uh, you know, we'll try to do better in the future. But honestly, I kind of just enjoyed just getting through the lesson. and Because these, these lessons are huge. There's a lot packed into them. And especially the Great Controversy, one of my, you know, one of my greatest or, or my favorite subjects. We're actually going to be studying for another, how long, month and a half or two yeah. months? Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, and we'd like to have you guys come along with us each and every Sabbath. So 9 o'clock yeah. Mountain Time, we're, we're, we're live right on the dot. So Lord willing, keep us in your prayers. If you guys have any prayer requests, send them to prophecymontana at gmail.com. Uh, we have the, the offer uh, for the Great Controversy also. If you guys would like a copy of that, be sure and send us your address, prophecymontana at gmail.com. Don't put that in the comments um, unless you want everybody to know your address, you know, <laughs> or your phone number or whatever. <laughs> But uh, thank you. God bless. And is there anything else you guys can think of? I always see feel you like next I'm week. For, yeah, Amen. we'll see you guys next Sabbath. Um, and, um, and yeah, all right.